So my name is Jason Chu. Um, I'm a high school student with a lot of passion um, for artificial intelligence. And this is my second study or work. It's called Integrative Sentiment Analysis, Leveraging Audio, Visual, and Textual Data. So I'll start with the introduction, uh, the overview of the aims of our study. Then I'll describe the approach to the research, the data set that we used, the methodology, the results that we achieved, and finally, the conclusion and observations and future work and references and acknowledgements. So when you think about sentiment analysis, the primary focus that has been in the past is revolving around textual data and using conventional models designed for textual data. That's something that you see very commonly, but there are a lot of other things you can consider that text does not cover. For example, you can pick up a lot of different things when you think about tone and facial expressions and things like that. For example, a person could say, oh, I'm okay, or I'm good in a video, but you can tell from their expressions and the voice inflection that this might not be true. And simply having textual data would ignore this factor. In addition to this, um, there have been so many new advanced communication technologies. There's been uh, a very large rise in popularity of many social media platforms. And a lot of videos have been uploaded across these platforms. You can see from this chart, it sort of illustrates the trends of uh, how fast social media has been growing. And in YouTube alone, around 3.7 million videos are uploaded daily. And this equates to about 500 hours of video content uploaded to YouTube every minute. So it's, it's really a lot. And this exponential increase in multimodal data encompassing text, audio, and visual information, it presents a new significant shift with a large opportunity for sentiment analysis. And we now have so much more richness in data and the amount of data that we have out there. And we have information about all of these things like the tone and facial expressions, all of these things that can be captured in model predictions. So therefore, uh, using a multimodal approach is able to capture all of this, all of this trends in the data, and um, it would be a very effective method. Okay, so our approach is therefore, we're trying to combine three modalities um, of audio, text, and video from a video clip to form an ensemble model prediction. Uh, and several approaches in sentiment analysis have been used in the past. There have been um, many studies doing research with two modalities, for example, just text and audio or audio and image or image and text. And also like various authors have explored different methods of fusion, like feature fusion and decision fusion. There are a few authors that also used the same data set that we used, which was will be talked about in the next slide. Um, and a few approaches also attempted to use all three modalities, uh, fusing all of them into one model. However, in a situation where only a subset of the models are available, this is not particularly useful. And instead we are combining them at, or we're combining the modalities and results at the end. So our methodology is possible even if there are certain modalities missing. However, overall, no one has done this specific type of experimentation on our data set that we are aiming to achieve. And our approach is paralleling the evolving trends in multimodal data analysis. And we aim to develop more sophisticated models and improve upon the past research that has been done. So the data set that we used is called CMU MOSI. Um, it was developed by the Carnegie Mellon University for the specific use of sentiment analysis, and this was developed in 2018. It has um, over 23,000 videos of spoken sentences with um, a lot of varying emotions. The distribution is shown here in the chart at the right. 
And you can see that there is a notable skew towards the more common emotions like happiness and sadness. This data set is very rich in multimodal content. It has uh, all aspects of audio, visual, and textual features, and it's been meticulously organized at the sentence level. And um, it equates to over 65 hours of content. And this data is data set is offering a very comprehensive platform for sentiment analysis. And there is a wide range of emotions that you can see here. Each video in our data set um, was categorized for sentiment analysis on a scale from negative three to three, identifying the six distinct emotions. And this makes it very suitable for addressing the objectives of our study. So in our study, we're gonna focus on the prediction of the six distinct emotions that this data set has, which are happiness, sadness, anger, disgust, surprise, and fear. And Note that this is a multi-label classification problem, which means that each video clip could have pos could be positive for several emotions. Okay, so here is our methodology. First, we have our data set, and we split our data set into test, train, and validation. And we also used a weighted optimization function to take care of the SKU. Um, we didn't change the data itself. Um, to start off, we have our audio models. So first of all, we had to extract the relevant features from audio. And we used the Librosa library focusing on MFCCs. And we explored using models on the featureized data set as a whole initially, but since it did not perform the best due to the imbalance of the data set, we switched to binary classifiers for each emotion um, by creating separate models for each emotion to address the skew. And the models used were SVC, support vector classifier, KNN, K nearest neighbor, and RFC, random forest classifier. So we tuned the hyperparameters um, for, and we used different kernel types for SVC, um, polynomial with varying degrees and RBF kernel. And we use different numbers of neighbors for KNN and different max depths and trees for RFC. And we selected the best performing model that we evaluated through our validation accuracy um, initially from all of these experiments for each emotion for the audio modality. So for our textual analysis, we used a model called BERT, um, bidirectional encoder representations from transformers for the textual analysis. And the preliminary step was transforming the textual data into numerical representations. And we just used audio tokenizer from the transformers library. And then we used hyperparameter tuning um, to find the best BERT model possible. And we changed different learning rates. Um, we changed the different weight the case and also we, tr we tried different epochs and then finally selected the model with the highest out uh, with the highest f1 score so for image analysis for this the image data set what we did was we captured an image once every five seconds for each clip and then therefore there are multiple images uh, for e each data set entry. And we employed the existing pre-trained model, um, FER, which is called facial, facial expression recognition. And we used that model for emotion detection on the images. And there was therefore no additional training on the data set because FER was pre-trained for image-based emotion recognition. So we simply had to deploy the model and have it make predictions. Okay, and then finally, we have our ensemble model. So we combined the predictions from the individual modalities to form an ensemble model um, by applying a threshold and averaging the results from each modality to determine our final emotion predictions and then give us our final results. Okay, so for results, there were hundreds of experiments run across all the modalities. And so I wouldn't be able to go over 
all of them or cover all of these, all the plots and all of the uh, data that we, or the experimentation that we did in the slideshow. So I'll just present the final overall confusion matrices from the best performing models of the individual modalities and later the ensemble model for each, the final ensemble model for each emotion. So here we have the confusion matrices for audio and you can see there are confusion matrices for each of the six emotions. It performed relatively well compared to the other modalities uh, as we'll see in a bit, but there's still room for improvement you can see. And um, this was again from the best audio models for each emotion that we used um, after changing to binary classifiers. This is the result for the best performing text model, which was BERT. Um, and these are the confusion matrices for each emotion. You can also see there is a lot of room for improvement. There's still some false positives and false negatives that can be improved on. And finally, our results for image. Um, and the reason why there are so many elements or data set elements in the confusion matrices is because there was an image taken every five seconds. Um, so there are many images for each new video clip. And the image modality did not perform particularly well as well as you can see. Um, the accuracies reached were not the highest. So then the next step was to combine all three of these modalities to get our ensemble model. And you can see there is notable improvement over the single modality uh, use that we used. And you can see the accuracies here over on the right. And each confusion matrices was generated by averaging the results of the best models for each mode. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, we tried a lot of models for hypertuning the parameters earlier for audio and BERT for text and FER for image. And these were the best results achieved after conducting all of those experiments. Okay, so conclusions and observations. Overall, the ensemble model that we used combining text, audio, and visual predictions, it exhibited a lot of notable improvements in accuracy over the single modalities and also improvements in precision and recall. So despite the challenges that we had in achieving optimal accuracies with single modality modes, the multimodal approach actually worked out really well and effectively captured all of these nuanced emotions and the trends that a single modality alone could not pick up, especially in distinguishing closely, uh, closely related or overlapping sentiments. The audio models exhibited many different nuanced trends as well with dependencies on the hyperparameters and models. Um, so there was a lot of interesting observations from the different hyperparameter tuning that we did with audio as well. And the BERT model for textual analysis demonstrated stability across varying learning rates, and that emphasizes the robustness in capturing the complexity of sentiment in the given data set. Um, although the fact that it did not perform the best shows also shows that the single modality of text even using such an advanced model uh, and transfer learning like BERT did not perform or was not able to get as well of an accuracy or results as the uh, multimodal approach. And so our results show the significance of multimodal sentiment analysis in real world applications. And it emphasizes the potential of integrating all three of these modalities, uh, audio, visual, and textual cues for a more comprehensive understanding of human emotions. And as the results clearly demonstrated better performance as we can, we can see. Okay, so for future research, there are a few different things that um, we have considered exploring to 
continue to achieve better accuracies and better results, even more than the, 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 the multimodal approach with three modalities. So first of all, exploring advanced featureization techniques for audio data to better capture the patterns. Um, we used the default features um, featureization. So we didn't do a higher featureization rate um, to gain more features, which could have helped make the data become more clear and more advanced. Um, and perhaps it would have had the audio models pick up the trends even better. Um, instead of using BERT, we can also try using different text models um, and using more novel architectures to enhance the text-based sentiment analysis component, um, trying different things beyond the BERT model that we use, and also experimenting with different image-based uh, emotion recognition models and fusion techniques to improve the overall accuracy and um, the robustness of the visual analysis could be tried as well. We also considered um, different techniques such as neural networks or deep learning techniques instead of KNN and RFC models and SVC models, and that could be tried in future work. And um, different models and architectures playing around with that, including different CNNs could be explored for the image modality as well. And finally, different fusion techniques, um, like mentioned, could be tested other than just averaging the results across modalities to improve and gain further accuracy. So here are the references and acknowledgements and special thanks to my mentor, Dr. Sindhu Ganta from AI Club um, for all the help along the way. And that's it. Thank you, everyone.